Welcome to this episode of the Global Liver Institute's GLI Live. This episode is called Connecting with the UK. Um, welcome into my home. I hope you are safe and well in your homes. Um, thank you for, for watching uh, this episode and continuing to support um, the work of the Global Liver Institute. I could not be more excited today um, to welcome uh, a friend, a colleague, a fellow warrior in this fight for liver health, Robert Mitchell Thain, um, who runs the PBC Foundation in, uh, in Scotland. He is their head of, edu uh, of education and development uh, for this wonderful foundation. He's also the vice president of the very new organization, the International Liver Patients Association. And we wanted today to be able to give um, some insights into the experience of liver patients outside of the United States. Um, we, this is a global pandemic. Uh, we are a global organization. And so the voices of our partners outside of the US are very important to us. So Robert, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to work with GLI once again. So thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, many people aren't very aware of uh, pediatric and rare liver diseases. So can you tell us what PBC stands for? Sure, absolutely. So PBC stands for primary biliary cholangitis. Cholangitis is very simply inflammation of your cholangiocytes. What does that mean in real terms? That's a big word. <laughs> Absolutely. So those are your bile duct cells inside your liver. Mm -hmm. So PBC is an autoimmune condition. So what's happening, if you imagine, if you've ever been in a bar or a nightclub, which I don't imagine Never. you will have. No. But in no. Case, and there's a fight that's broken out mm -hmm. and the security guard gets the wrong person and kicks them out. Uh -huh. That is PBC, where your immune mm -hmm. system, your own security mm -hmm. guard, picks the wrong cells mm -hmm. and then starts to attack them. So, so that's it's like he, the bouncer starts attacking the bartender and the other staff of the establishment instead of the rowdy guests. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this is important to me. I also have a rare autoimmune uh, liver disease. That's what led to my transplant. And so it's been very important for me to be able to support the, the rare liver disease community um, as well. So. Um, Thank you for that educational moment uh, for all of our viewers. It's important. So what has the experience with COVID-19 been uh, for, for folks in, in Scotland and the rest of the UK? That's a great question, thank you. And again, like so many countries around the world, um, it, it's, it, it's good, it's bad. It, it, every day is different. We were perhaps not as quick as other countries in terms of our lockdown. Um, but it seems to be to be making a difference, um, both in terms of the spread of the condition, mm -hmm. in terms of the most at risk and the most vulnerable mm -hmm. um, being exposed to, to the condition, and then allowing the NHS to be able to, to firefight as best as they can mm -hmm. the most urgent cases. Um, we have a wonderful thing, which is every Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time, Mm -hmm. We all go out in the streets. I don't know if you've seen this, but we all go out the street and we clap for carers. So we give a round of applause um, for the, you said warriors earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these people truly are heroes and truly are warriors and they're out there saving our lives. So 8 p.m. is the least we can do is get out there, give them our appreciation and show them that we support them and we are with them and we absolutely are grateful for, for everything they're doing to help us. I think that's so important. Um, I know, you know, as, as liver patients, we value our doctors every day, but this is a special moment and healthcare workers have really um, stood up uh, for everyone. And I know in New York at 7 p.m., firefighters and police and others blink lights and clap. And, and I think that's the, you know, very least that, that we can do at this time. You know, the, the PBC Foundation has done um, a lot of things during this pandemic. You've, you know, just like GLI, you have pivoted, pivoted very quickly to, um, to, you know, to serve all the different types of patient needs. So tell us about some of the things that you've been doing. Well, thank you. So again, key word, serve. You know, this is why we're here. This is what we do. And every single thing we do here at the Foundation has to be patient-led. 
Absolutely. It absolutely is. Now, the data, you know, we, we've been lucky enough to, to read the, the data and the science that, that comes up with different liver diseases. But what we know, even out with the COVID-19 era, mm -hmm. that social isolation has a much, much bigger impact on the quality of life right. than the symptom burden. So this is always something that we've been looking to do is to, mm -hmm. to break that social isolation, bring people together and make sure we're meeting the patients um, where they need us to be mm -hmm. um, and to make sure that we can meet at least some of those unmet needs. Um, so like yourself, we have jumped onto the mm -hmm. digital bandwagon, mm -hmm. um, which has been a learning experience. <laughs> I know. I've learned technology. more technology in the past two weeks than... I've ever thought I needed needed to know. So we're doing homeschooling here in the UK, and I thought that meant the kids, but no, it turns out <laughs> it's technology. Every day we learn another way to to get the technology wrong. But no, so we have been incorporating um, technology as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, twice a week we do a formal webinar. Mm -hmm. um, so these are for our registered service users. Now, again, in case people have not heard of and the PVC Foundation and what we do. We are based in the UK, but that's an mm -hmm. accident of birth. Um, but we support patients in over 75 countries around the right. world. So we try and translate as many of our services as, as, as possible to make sure that everyone has the same access. So for example, our webinars, you can choose the language in the mm -hmm. written text. So people can ask our questions in, for example, Spanish or Portuguese, and then we can read the questions in English. That's and fantastic. then if we type an answer, they can then get the answer back in their own language. So anyway, so we're doing these webinars. We're gonna we're gonna borrow that, by the way. I'm just saying. It's it's I'm fantastic technology. Give you, give you credit. We do have Google Translate on our website, so that people can get any of the things on our website, including the COVID nineteen updates in fifty different languages, if they use that uh, in their browser. Wonderful. Good. 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 And you know, this is the key. It's about reaching people wherever they are. Right. This is a global pandemic, mm -hmm. and the social isolation faced in Italy is the same as New York, is the same right. as UK, is the same as Israel. So, you know, we have so many people that we need to, to, to reach, mm -hmm. um, break the isolation, to give them information. So our first webinar, we had the chair of our medical advisory board, mm -hmm. Professor James Newberger, and he spoke about the COVID situation in the UK. Right. What does the guidance mean? What does it mean for patients? Um, are they still going to get their services? And the answer mm -hmm. is yes. But again, you know, the doctors are looking at their own practices. Mm -hmm. So they're bringing in telemedicine, they're bringing in all of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Again, making sure that the patients are informed and still um, receiving the same treatments. Mm -hmm. so, so we're doing that. Um, so Professor Newberger is every Thursday, 2 okay. p.m. UK time, but anyone can, can, can join in. And then every Monday, 2 p.m. UK time, we just talk about PBC. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about some of the coping strategies that people might need now more than ever. Um, you know, we, we, we look at PBC patients holistically. Mm -hmm. They're more than just a, an abnormal outfoss test. Right. You know, we have people that are, you know, they have minds, bodies, and souls. Mm -hmm. And if we are going to self-manage, and I thoroughly believe that healthcare begins with self-care. Right. So if we are going to look after ourselves, we need to look after ourselves, mind, body, and soul. So Absolutely yes, information, information is key. Um, but the other thing we've been doing is to break this isolation. Um, and I say this with a huge, enormous grin on my face because mm -hmm. the, I think the technical term is nonsense. <laughs> uh, we all need a little nonsense, a little yeah. silliness in our lives. This is also serious sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. So 4 p.m. every single day of this COVID era lockdown, irrespective of which country you're in. Um, so 4 p.m. UK time comes in about mm -hmm. 2 a.m. in Australia. I, I think that, uh, you know, the, it's the five o'clock somewhere syndrome has been pervasive during this pandemic. Normal things are, are lifted. Um, and so we, we just have nonsense every day. It's a chit chat. So sometimes there's a quiz. Mm -hmm. We've done poetry. So for example, we, we looked at um, a poem called The Invitation by Uriah mm -hmm. Mount which is a mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful piece. And we just broke it down. What does it mean now? What does it mean in the COVID era? What does it mean wow. for us? 
looking after ourselves. Wow. Um, and then going back to the nonsense, so every Friday we have a sing along. Um, we delicately have called it Mame That Tune. <laughs> <laughs> sort of oh. sounds like. <laughs> What can you say? So the people that are there in the room will write mm -hmm. down in the Facebook comments any songs they want to do. Mm -hmm. I will get the app up on my iPad, mm -hmm. drum through the chords, and then everybody in their own house <laughs> sing along as loudly as they like. <laughs> so is everybody on mute or is it sort of a, a choral, choral effect? So um, because we're using Facebook Live, it's just okay. myself who's okay. the only one to be heard. So it's sort of like a rave dance party when you're in your own and you hear your own your own voice and music. <laughs> so and, and people love it and it's good fun mm -hmm. and it breaks the isolation. And again, we've got people from so we had people playing um music with us at 2 a.m. Australian time and they were singing mm -hmm. along. We've had Americans and Canadians, Israelis, mm -hmm. people from all over Europe joining in and um being part of the nonsense, which is fantastic. I look forward to participating myself, and we will make sure that the schedule of all of these wonderful events are in the, the, the show notes so that everybody who views this has an opportunity to, to join in on the fun, on the silliness, on the nonsense. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, this, these are all parts of, um, you know, the coping strategies. I, you know, you've been so supportive of GLI Live from the beginning, and I really so value your, your participation and, and support. And as we were talking, you said, you know, one of our, our previous guests, uh, Sarah Goldberger, um, a social worker um, who was talking about coping strategies, really yeah, yeah, resonated yeah. Um, with you. So I think, you know, the, the sing-alongs are part of the coping strategies, but, you know, other things you're, you know, you're using or um, uh, that have been helpful to you, you know, I think that um, there's the patient, uh, you know, aspect of this all, but there's also, for those of us who are leading advocacy organizations, you know, there's an added layer of, of stress and responsibility, um, you know, that we hold the weight because we care so much about, um, you know, providing the right information and the right services to so many people. So what are some of the coping strategies that you use? Well, that's a great question. So, and, and this is very much do as I do, not do as I say, because for me, I mean, Donna, you'll know this, the, the demand for our services has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, last week we had over 400 helpline calls, which for a tiny organization is just, you know, it's, it's a huge amount. So, so we're learning in terms of our coping strategies mm -hmm. and, and, and on this. Um, so these are very much, Again, you know, they're, they're proven tools. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there are various tools that we can use. And some of them are kind of slow burns. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the instant, I need a fix because I'm in a bad place. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you are in that maelstrom, so you, you've, not got, you've not got control of your thoughts, you are mm -hmm. you're in a place, you're in the emotional part of your brain, there's no logic, there, there's no kind of problem solving mm -hmm. in there. Just stop. What can I do to, to, you know? And part of it is about the language we use when we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay, and an example for that. So if, for example, in this webinar, um, if I was to drop my drink or spill my glass, mm -hmm. not my glass over, I would imagine you would say something supportive. I would. I would. And then you would probably um, take over the talking <laughs> of the webinar mm -hmm. and allow me to clean my mess up yeah. and then come back and present. Okay. Right. And then tease because you mercilessly after we stop recording. Absolutely. Yes. yes. But my question to you is what would you say if you spilt the glass? That is a, that's an excellent question. I think. Uh, Time is told that I am excellent in, in a crisis, so I would be very calm as I, um, you know, as I spilt it, and then berate myself endlessly, you know, afterwards. It would live on a little trail in my brain over and over for quite a while, um, occasionally coming back like a little flash, um, probably for the next few years, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> as a twitch, yeah, yeah. but um, I, I would hope that I would eventually forgive myself. You know, I am, um, you know, this has been 
a lot. Um, standing up a COVID-19 response program for liver patients on top of everything else that GLI um, has been doing, as well as trying to you know, organize and manage and access my own care as a GI and liver patient during this time when so many things are, are closed down and you know, converted for um, COVID-19 patients yeah. and care. Um, and, and so there have been times after the 10th Zoom call where I have needed to you know, pour myself on my Peloton bike which is a, you know, a good thing. I, um, our, the producer of, of GLI Live has sent me her you know, preferred yoga um, you know, online instructor. So I look forward to, um, to that. And then I also, you know, as we're writing the COVID updates, I have to remind myself, I am not the staff of uh, the Washington Post. I am not the entire staff of uh, you know, the New York Times. And so, you know, just pick a, a topic that we think will be useful to people and, you know, and, and put that out there. And that's frankly how we came to, you know, the most recent COVID update focused on um, liver cancer care and, you know, hepatocellular carcinoma and all of those sort of oncology, um, you know, issues. And I think we'll pick those themes um, later off. You know, I am I am a former Baptist Sunday school teacher. I am a, a Christian, and so there's a you know biblical verse about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But I realize I'm like, and I believe that. But perhaps I don't need to do all things. Um, is the is the point of that uh, of me of me saying that? So um, you know, I think you're right that our internal discussion, our internal um, coping me mechanisms, our internal um, sense of, you know, forgiving ourselves for being stressed at this time or not being as focused as we are, um, or, you know, not performing at the same standards for the same number of hours in the same way when we're trying to balance this sort of global sense of fear and uncertainty, as well as perhaps additional activities at home, whether it's, you know, schooling children, um, and, uh, you know, or, or, you know, or dealing with a spouse and, and uh, who may be at, at high risk um, or, or needing, you know, caregiving or worrying about, you know, a parent um, or, you know, an older relative um, who may not, you know, who you may be uh, separated from. And so all of those things recognizing that have an impact and being able to um, realize that this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know, there's, it's going to be several months um, of of change before life really gets back to normal. And even when that happens, it might be a different normal. Um, so we have to, you know, be nimble and reimagine and rethink and, and recalibrate in that. Absolutely, absolutely true. And the key here, and as we move forward, and again, there was a social media campaign to be kind. Mm -hmm. We need yes. to be kind to ourselves. We need to look after ourselves. So with your permission, I'll just quickly share a couple of, of tools that we've really felt helpful. So one is a right. slow burn. I'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. First off, when you're in that panic, mm -hmm. when you're in that stressful moment when you, you're losing control of yourself, we're going to ask you to stop and we're going to ask you to focus on five things. We're going to ask you to focus on five things that you see. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask you to focus on four things that you feel. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask you to focus on three things that you can hear. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, a silent room is never silent. Right. So take that moment to really focus on what's around you. So three things you can hear. Two things you can smell, and we're going to ask you to focus on one thing that you can taste. Mm -hmm. And what that does is take you in the room, mm -hmm. your body, what you can feel, and it takes you deeper and deeper inside yourself to ground yourself, calm yourself from those thoughts, and take back control of where you are. Oh, Robert, I think that's fantastic. Thank you. So that's the, the first two that we're sharing. And it is, it's that ah, moment mm -hmm. where you feel lost and everything's out of control. Take it back and think five, four, three, two, one, and ground. 
and it absolutely has an impact. So I'd love to share that with your viewers. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're Thank welcome. you for sharing it with me. I hope everybody else appreciates it as well. So, um, so the other thing I want to share with you is the idea of a gratitude book. Mm -hmm. So Donna, if I was to ask you, what made you smile six weeks last Tuesday? Can you tell? <laughs> no. No. Not precisely. Okay. So if I were to go into my gratitude book, mm -hmm. I, I could tell you. So my gratitude book is just a tiny, tiny, mm -hmm. it's about that size, it's a bright orange book. I take it everywhere around the world with me. And I fill it in each and every single night. And I mm -hmm. fill it in one page, mm -hmm. one sentence. Today, uh, I am grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, today, I am grateful for the opportunity to be working with the GLI. And that's mm -hmm. my so, and that will be my input tonight. Now, on I, Tuesday, I am honored to be in the book. <laughs> oh, um, but so for example, yesterday, Tuesday, I was grateful for vegan salted caramel cheesecake. Ooh. Just saying. So, working here with the ELI is right up there. <laughs> <laughs> with caramel yes. cherry caramel cheesecake mm, that i'm yes. really i'm thank you so, but there are other days where i've been grateful for my dogs or I'm walking mm -hmm. the sun. it doesn't matter but it's the tiniest thing because even on our worst day even under lockdown there's always something that makes us smile there's always something that, that makes us thankful and if we can record that one mm -hmm. again it changes us back to a, a positive focus yes two over the time scale so when you're having a bad day mm -hmm. and the lockdown's getting to you and you're feeling the pressure and you need to again get back control of where mm -hmm. you are go back to your book like, oh oh that zoom call with the grandkids or oh that cheesecake mm -hmm. oh, i've not had sake in ages and then you start <laughs> to think about all these things and mm -hmm. again changes where you are now when you think about the the biochemistry within the brain mm -hmm. okay we're looking at serotonin we're looking at oxytocin we're looking at mm -hmm. endorphins, we're looking at dopamine and we're trying to induce those chemicals to make us feel more up now the simple act of saying thank you mm -hmm. produces some of these compounds within our brains yes and so it changes where we are biochemistry terms mm -hmm changes where we are emotionally yeah. which then changes where we are physically so the tiniest act of being grateful for what the tiniest tiniest little thing mm -hmm. can change where we are emotionally physically psychologically does that make sense it makes perfect sense um you know and i do um often stop myself and recount sort of every morning um you know things that i'm grateful for but i don't write it down often there you know it lives in some sometimes in some places but um, I have a goal to make a regular habit of that so I can look back on wonderful times like this that I'm so grateful for. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So the, the last thing I'm going to talk about is what we call the golden moment. Okay. So what we ask you to do is to take a moment to close your eyes and to remember what we call a golden moment. Now, this could be anything any particular dynamic you're looking for but the three mm -hmm. ones we use in particular often is one a time when you felt invincible mm. two a time when you felt serene and mm -hmm. ultimately at peace with yourself in the world mm -hmm. and then the third one which with your permission we'll use today is we will ask you and your viewers mm -hmm. to remember a time when you laughed until it hurt okay you ever laugh till you cry yes absolutely well you know gli is putting together a, a a dance video much like your sort of nonsense things and so um i certainly laughed at myself um as i was putting together my my dance submission um so look for that in the future <laughs> um okay. people Fabulous. so again quickly just to to the viewers if you want to take a moment to, to sit, relax, mm -hmm. close your eyes, and to remember a time when you laughed until it hurt. You're already making my cheeks 
I, you know, my cheeks, uh, <laughs> my cheeks hurt. I've smiled and laughed so much just in the time that we've had together. Fabulous, thank you. So, and the focus again is to, to remember that moment, to, to remember what were you wearing? Mm. Who were you with? Mm -hmm. What was the temperature? Ah. What could you hear? What was the sound of the laughter like? What were you laughing at? How did it feel inside? Was it a mm -hmm. belly? Was it a giggle? Was it so when I lose control, I go into a motley giggle? <laughs> no dastardly, Dick Dastardly and Motley, then you'll know that kind of. I, I do, I do, I remember that. <laughs> and, and so, you know, think about the type of laughter it was, mm -hmm. focus on what you could hear, what you could feel, what you could see. And again, by just taking a few moments to focus on all of those details, you change where you are. As, as you know, I'm, I've often called out on my sort of Betty Rubble, like uh, laugh, giggle, um, that thankfully is, is frequently heard because I try to look on the bright side of things. And so, you know, we make quite the cartoon pairing. Um, but I think humor does help us through trying times um, and struggles and puts things in the proper perspective. Um, and so thank you so much for sharing all of those things with me and with our viewers. Um, thank you. Thank you for how you approach this, this really, you know, important work. Um, and, you know, I'd love to, um, before we, before we go, I want to make sure that we address um, our future, our future together, um, serving uh, rare liver patients in particular. Um, July is so excited to be able to partner with you on the fantastic uh, digital app that you have been so innovative in putting um, into, uh, you know, into the world and, and, and uh, serving patients. And whether it's in person or virtual, uh, we are still going to be holding our Advanced Advocacy Academy, our A3 program in September. And we look forward to having you participate in, in that. So, you know, Robert, maybe give us a little preview um, or talk about talk about the app and maybe a preview of what you'll be bringing to us um, at A3. All right, thank you. So again, I'm so, so looking forward to, to working with you on this. So the app, we are absolutely delighted. Again, it was patient led. Um, and it was it, it started off with the, the principle of having information at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have information. So for example, you know, I, I've got so here is um, this is our lay version mm -hmm. of the, uh, the guidance on PVC care and management. Yes. We turned into, we took out all the Greek, all the Latin, <laughs> and turned it into plain English for, mm -hmm. for patients. Um, and that's great until you leave it at home. <laughs> and you know, Donna, you've been a patient for many years now, so how yeah. many times, particularly in the early days, did you have your piece of paper up in the fridge? You had the magnet mm -hmm. there. You write your questions. Right. Go to the hospital and go multiple sweaty words. <laughs> so the idea is that I, I didn't say that very often. I'll just admit, uh, but okay. yes, the under the forgetting the, the the paperwork or even you know now most recently, I, I get accustomed to the AHR. And sometimes I don't bring the handy dandy, you know, three page distillation of my medical history and latest labs and everything with me because I'm expecting them to have it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I always wish I had brought my, you know, distillation and my notes with me, you know, to hand them their copy. Very quickly, because I'm aware of time. But um, so the app has all the information on PBC. It also has an opportunity to record your symptoms on a day to day basis. How is your joint pain, your bone pain? How's your itch? How's your fatigue? Mm -hmm. And again, it allows patients to see that in a chart over time. Mm -hmm. So you can see the patterns. It allows you to record your test. And not just your PVC test, but for example, and again, some people will know this, mm -hmm. but um, over 40% of people with PVC will have at least one other yes. autoimmune condition. Right. So for people with PVC, it's important to know your thyroid levels. Right. It's important to know your cholesterol, your diabetes, mm -hmm. all of these kind of tests. So they're included right. in the app. And then the third thing we do with the app is we ask people their experience. Mm -hmm. Does your doctor ask about your symptoms? Mm -hmm. 
does your doctor weigh you each mm -hmm. appointment? And so by using the patient experience, we can then use that information in an ethical and GDPR compliant way mm -hmm. to ensure that we use that experience to drive forward policy, practice, and the next generation of research questions. Fantastic. Fantastic. So needed. Um, you know, I've been in the digital healthcare space for a very long time now. You know, I'm a double wearables user. Um, exactly. And so I really, um, you know, can, can, can say that this is a, a huge, uh, meeting a huge need um, for PBC patients and, and for liver patients as a whole. So I'm very excited to, to partner with you and see how we can, you know, scale this up. Um, and then, and then for A3, to give a tease for um, both our A3 um, advocates, those who will be returning, and the, the next class, the class of 2020, um, you know, I think they've gotten a sense from our conversation here today a little bit about what they'll um, we'll be getting. I think you'll probably drive our registration rates, uh, you know, at least 50% higher just from learning that, that you'll be part of it, but you know, what's sort of one advocacy tip that you've learned that you might want to pass along to, uh, to people at A3? Wow. You didn't There's so me many. <laughs> I know you have, there are so many, but to, what's, to what's one of your lessons learned or what are the one thing that you wish somebody had told you at the beginning of your advocacy journey, your very long advocacy journey? Ask the question. Yeah. Ask the question. Because um, the chances are someone right. else in that room is thinking the same things. Right. You know, and, and, you know, we, we've been in a room, um, you know, I, we, we remember the days when, when medicine was done at patients. Mm -hmm. Then it was done to patients. Mm -hmm. And we're now starting to become medicine with patients. Right. But we were of a generation where we bowed and curtsied when we walked into and out of a doctor's, you mm -hmm. know, but doctor's are open to learning, they are open to being challenged in a respectful way. So if you hear what they're saying and you need more information or you need clarity, mm -hmm. ask the question. Absolutely. You know, so many patients, they get home after the visit or they're trying to explain it to a family member or, you know, they get up in the middle of the night and they're like, what did he actually tell me? What am I supposed to do? And so, you know, write down your questions beforehand, ask the question, don't be afraid. Um, you know, you may not only benefit yourself, but you may be helping the doctor as well to understand where he has been unclear so that the next patient has a better experience because you asked the question. So I think that's a fantastic piece of advice. Thank you. So Robert, I just wanna thank you for your time with us today. As you know, I could talk to you all afternoon, all evening, all evening long. Um, and I do look forward to, to partnering with you in the future. Um, and to everybody who has uh, viewed this episode, we'll have um, more information on, on many of the things that Robert talked about that the PVC Foundation is doing um, in, the, in the notes for the show and on, and on Facebook, on the Global Liver Institute uh, website. So please join us next week for the next episode of GLI Live. And you can also find us at globalliver.org and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we'll also put the PVC Foundation website so that you can uh, find Robert and uh, his many good works and colleagues as well. So thank you so much. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and stay connected. Bye.